And in a recent note, you talked about the uh, 10-year yield moving sharply higher as inflation expectations decline. Help us understand what that means in the real world. And I mean the real world on every street corner other than Wall Street. Well, I mean, what people people are looking at, you know, are in a sense real yields in terms of what your borrowing costs are, what corporations can borrow at, and yeah, what we're seeing now is this just a spike in nominal yields or U.S. Treasury yields, as in a good way, right? As financial conditions remain loose and you know the economy continues to grow, but we also have to look at what's happening with inflation expectations or say the consumer's purchasing power. So as we've had this sort of inflation expectations rise, you know it is impacting what we call real yields. And one of the things that we look at in particular, and one of the things that we believe the Fed looks at, are things like the 30-year mortgage rate. You know, having the consumer and the not restricting the consumer is key. And when we look at what's happening to the 30-year mortgage rate that has gone up the highest in the past three months, that's something that we believe that not only Wall Street looks at, but obviously the consumer looks at. So when we enter this morning and we hit these broad, like you know rise in 10-year yields close to 1.43, um, you know, it does sort of it is rather eye-opening, just not only the level, but how quickly we got there. Well, Leslie, going off of that, you mentioned how quickly we we got to the levels that we're currently seeing today. How worried then are you about a potential rate shock, or do you think some of the risk that we're that we've been talking about over the last few weeks is slightly overblown? You know, I, I think it's a little overdone. Our opinion is the Fed does not taper this year, and we think that the 120 billion that they're buying a month, the 80 billion in Treasuries, and the 40 billion in you know mortgage-backed securities, you know, stays you know as is. And the reason that is is because they don't they don't want to see the 30-year or the 10-year Treasury rate go too high. They don't want to see the mortgage rate go too high too quickly. So we do think that you know the move that we've seen in the past eight weeks is is much greater than what we anticipated. But we don't think this is going to be the so 2013 type scenario. Because again, as Paul has reiterated numerous times, yields are rising on the back of stronger growth or the expectation of strong growth on positive vaccine news, on the expectation that consumer demand increases during the second half. So financial conditions, what we refer to, remain relatively loose. So our expectation is not to have this large rise in interest rates much further from here, but you really need to see, you know, not just look at the projections now, you need to look at the data. And the data, you know, won't really be clear until the second half. But the the yields that we're seeing are still minuscule compared to what most of us grew up with or knew as adults. So what's that magic number? At which point the Fed goes in to say, no, we don't want it going higher. Or people in equity say, you know what? I need to go into fixed income. We're nowhere near that number. We aren't, and you're absolutely right. And you know, it's it's really difficult to say, you know, a magic number. You know, people have thrown around. If you want to look at things like the equity premium, maybe it's a two percent nominal ten-year Treasury yield, but it really again depends on financial conditions. If the credit markets are doing well, if the dollar doesn't appreciate quickly, if people still have access to capital and financial conditions remain loose, then then it's a healthy rise in interest rates. You know, if we go to the point where interest rates are rising and the equity market is doing poorly, we see this widening in credit spreads, that's when the Fed might take a step back and say, okay, this could be a bit concerning. And maybe they do something such as a wham extension or something to really mitigate that rise in rates. 